Hello guys, I finally got some of these uh, PCF8574 um, IO expansion chips so I'll finally be able to test out this uh, little PCB that I made that's supposed to connect the Arduino Pro Mini to the TV6612 FNG motor driver and to an NRF24 L01 radio. So this is kind of like a first step on the road to making a board for inside vehicles like inside the tractors and the trucks and also I have an idea for a second board for inside the excavators but the first board is hopefully going to have an Atmega chip and all the uh, circuitry required for that plus a PCF8574 chip to expand the outputs then a TB6612 FNG motor driver uh, for any drive motors so that kind of board you'd put it into a tractor or a, a truck or any sort of normal vehicle or you could also put it into a trailer you could use the motor driver for screw drive on a trailer so that's the idea for one self-contained kind of uh, control board and it will be programmed the same way as the Arduino Pro Mini the next board will basically be the same thing only there will be possibly an extra PCF8574 and there will be more than one TB6612 FNG motor drivers because it will be for something like an excavator where you might have a, a, a screw mechanism on each um, axis of the boom so each each joint you might have a screw motor so we should have enough motor drivers to control all of those but today we're going to look at this kind of first step thing and basically it's just a connection between all these different modules and first thing it needs to do is plug into a Arduino Pro Mini. So for this test one what I'm going to do is set up the Arduino here with mail headers on the bottom so that I can plug it into a breadboard for testing and I'll put female headers on the top so that I can plug this board in on top but normally you just solder this board uh, directly to the Pro Mini because you'd be trying to save space on your model but as I'm only doing testing I'm going to uh, leave this one with the female sockets on top so that I can switch between a couple of different types of boards. I'm going to test three different configurations so I have this SMD uh, NRF24 and I'm going to just solder it directly to the PCB here and that'll be the first configuration see if that works. For the second configuration I'm going to use some of this ribbon cable and I'm just going to connect a little bit of wire from that and connect the radio module to the end of that. So you might use a configuration like that if you position the um, Arduino and the motor driver in the base of the model around about where the drive motor is and you want a little bit of wire to bring your radio up to the cab say you might hide your radio in the seat and that way you should get a better uh, radio signal than confining the radio inside the metallic uh, body of the model and for the final configuration I'm just going to solder on this connector here so I can test out if the uh, normal radio module the bigger one if that works any better than the smaller one does with this configuration. So the first thing I'm going to do is just solder the header onto the Arduino Pro Mini here. Nothing too complicated here. So I'll just skip ahead to when that's done. Okay, there's the Pro Mini ready. So the next thing to do is start on this little board here. And I think I'll do the SMD components first. You can see there's a little jumper here. So I need to connect a wire between the central uh, pad here and the, one of the outer pads I'm going to connect it to the ground pad here that was to set the address of the PCF8574 chip and um, the idea was that you could have one of these above the Arduino and one below the Arduino but uh, I'm just going to have the one above it obviously because I have it set up now to go into a breadboard let's plug into a breadboard I'll start with the bottom I'll connect this pad and I'll solder in the 3.3 volt regulator that's the bottom half done, so we'll flip them over and solder the PCF8574 in place. And there's the PCF8574 in place. So next thing I think I'll do is install the header to plug it into the Arduino. Now we have the pin header on the bottom of these little PCBs, so we can just plug it in and out. That should make the testing a little bit easier. So now I'll just put the different radio module uh, configurations that I want to try out. So I need to solder one directly, one through the ribbon cable and then another ribbon cable for the larger NRF. 
Okay, so here's our three little test um, PCBs. Normally, the motor driver would go on top. Would um, just would go would go on top here. Normally, the motor driver would go about there, but um, I, these are kind of expensive, so I don't want to waste three of them on these, especially if the PCBs aren't going to work. So, uh, also, I don't think the motor driver would affect the radio too much. This one is sticking out here, but the motor drivers over this side that was the only one that might have affected it but I don't think it will so what I'm going to do is just upload the code for the um, 4TW35 onto this and then see how our connection is with the controller because on the controller we can get a quick idea of how many packets we're losing using the little um, well the little indicator that I bought in the code so that's what I'll do now I just spent ages trying to get the program uploaded to the Arduino Pro Mini and uh, the upload just kept failing but in the end I tried uh, well as a kind of a last ditch attempt I tried re reflowing the solder on the pins of the app mega chip so I just went around each pin carefully uh, trying to um, wet the solder again so that it might reflow along the pins to the pad and when I plugged it back into the FTDI cable it started to work so there's a little tip if you're having trouble uploading to your Arduino Pro Mini and uh, you've tried everything else last little thing you can try is just carefully reflowing the different pins and it might work as it did for me okay I've been playing around with these things now for a little while and I'll just show you that I haven't had much success uh, don't forget our connection will be displayed here if we have a good connection or not so I'll power up the first one of these I can see from the LED in here on pin 13 that we are at least trying to communicate with the NRF but you can see we have no connection at all so the most common thing that you nearly always want to do then is add a capacitor in here in case there is a problem and because I have done this many times before I have an NRF that already has the capacitors built in so let's try that one and now if we power it up hopefully this one will work And there we go, we have a full connection there. So that means we have less than five packets being lost um, in a row. So that is pretty perfect uh, signal there. These boards that I designed do have little pads in here for a capacitor there. Um, I don't have any surface mount capacitors, uh, new ones. So I'll have a little dig through some old PCBs. See can I find a capacitor that I can put in there and if I do I'll test that out this one because it's uh, so far away from the main PCB here I don't think there'll be much benefit to putting the capacitor in there but if I can find one I'll put it there first we'll see if that works if that doesn't work we'll get another one of these capacitors and stick it up here at the top and I'd imagine that will work but this is all a little bit of experimenting and we just want to see what's going to happen well I didn't get any surface mount uh, capacitors but I do have a bunch of these uh, 10 microfarad capacitors so they'll just have to do first I'll try soldering uh, a capacitor on each of these boards to these pads here that were supposed to be for a surface mount um, capacitor and we'll see if that works actually first I better show you that they don't work before I add the capacitors so here's the first one uh, keep an eye on the the uh, deal packet lost one or signal down there on the controller so we're powered up, our LED is on here so we know we're trying to communicate but we have no signal getting to our controller here so that's that one, let's get the other one again our LED is on here so we're trying to communicate but we have no connection so I'll solder those capacitors in place ok so I've soldered the capacitor in on each of these I think this one might work now uh, if it doesn't I think we have bigger problems than a capacitor so let's check that out first and now we have perfect connection once again so that's less than uh, five data packets being lost in a row five data packets in a row so that's pretty ideal that is exactly what we were looking for actually so I'm happy with that let's try the other one uh, the capacitors are here or the capacitor is on this end now so I'm not really expecting this one to work I'd say we'll have to put the capacitor up beside the 
radio module itself but let's give it a go there we go oh we do have we have perfect connection again yeah we have a perfect signal connection again less than five packets being lost in a row there so that is ideal um, I wasn't expecting that to work that well but it's great that it does. So there you go, we got a connection with all of those uh, radio modules. They all required a 10 microfarad capacitor to uh, get them to work. But in the end, they are working pretty perfectly. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Ford TW35 code finished. I had to upload the code from the website, the John Deere 9560R code. And that doesn't use the PCF chip there. So I'll have to work on the forward code and hopefully in a follow-up video I'll be able to show you how I'm using the uh, PCF8574 chip to control the um, motor drivers. So this little prototype is just to help me figure out how these components are going to work together. So it's great that this one in particular worked because it's going to be close to what I um, finally build. Only there won't be a separate board for all these three modules. They'll all be on one PCB that will go into uh, the tractor or the truck whatever you're building or at least that's the plan hopefully when the kickstarter finishes I'll be able to uh, get those PCBs manufactured or the prototypes of the next generation of these little boards manufactured and um, I can get testing them out pretty soon so if you like these ideas make sure and hit the like button and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, suggestions and uh, I think that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching